The key to unlocking and building relationships is self-disclosure. Self-disclosure is the process of deliberately revealing information about yourself that's not necessarily easily known by others. It's an intentional act in which you share information about yourself. Self-disclosure is a balancing act. There's all different types of relationships and you have to know and understand what's appropriate in what relationship and at what timing in a relationship. Too little information and the relationship never gets off the ground. Too much information and you have people running away or backing away from you. In this video, I'm going to share some different models of self-disclosure, the risk, rewards, and why we disclose, and some tips on healthy disclosure. In the early 70s, Altman and Taylor, two social psychologists, developed a model that looked at how relationships developed through social disclosure. They called the theory the social penetration theory. Altman and Taylor's theory suggests that building relationships is like peeling back the layers of an onion. With the most surface information about yourself on the outside of the onion, and the core, private, most hidden information about yourself in the center part of the onion. Two terms that are central to their model are the breadth and depth of self-disclosure in relationships. Breadth is the range of different topics that we can talk about in a relationship. So in any relationship, we might stick to one or two topics or we might fully talk to this person about everything that goes on in our life. To give you an idea of some of the range of the topics and what that means, we could talk about things such as our work, our school, our financial concerns, our professional ambitions, our health, our political thoughts, our spiritual thoughts, our religious thoughts, and what we want for our future. Altman and Taylor suggest that if you go around the outside of the onion, each little section of the onion represents these range of topics that you might talk about. But we notice the outside of that onion is very surface level. To build relationships, we have to self-disclose more and go to the inner core of the onion. That leads us to our next term. When we go deeper and disclose more about our hopes and dreams and these different other topics and give more intimate information, we call that in the Altman and Taylor model, depth. So depth on the topic of your future hopes and dreams might talk about how many kids you want to have, who you want to marry, and what really drives you from your past to want all these things. To better understand depth, think about depth as the information that you're not going to disclose to just anyone. You're going to wait till you have a certain level of trust before you disclose that type of information. Altman and Taylor's theory suggests that there's different types of relationships based on breadth and depth. So you could have a relationship that's deep, but it's only about one topic. So for example, somebody who you work with might know everything that you think about work, but they don't know anything about you outside of work. You could have breadth with no depth. And what that means is you talk about almost all kinds of topics with an individual, but you only stay at the surface level relative to information you disclose. Um, on those topics. And then you could have breadth and depth. And this means that you share very personal information on the topics and you do it on a large number of topics. You'll also notice in their model that Altman and Taylor are label each layer of the onion from a public layer on the outside to an inner core that we very rarely share. So, if self-disclosure leads to good relationships, why don't we disclose to everybody? Well, the reason for this is disclosure comes with both risk and reward. So, let's first talk about some of the rewards of disclosure. Why do we disclose? The first reason is that self-disclosure helps us build relationships. 
we need to disclose in order for people to trust us and share more information with us. This expectation that disclosure go back and forth is called the norm of reciprocity. And it basically means that if we disclose to someone and they don't disclose back to us, in most situations, it's going to cause us to lose trust and to shut down our disclosures. Another benefit of self-disclosure is catharsis. This is basically the emotional relief that occurs when you get something that's bothering you or a secret off of your chest. Studies have shown that there are both mental and physiological benefits, in other words, health benefits, to self-disclosure of things that are dark, deep secrets that people are holding on to. Another benefit of self-disclosure is self-knowledge or self-clarification of ourselves. So by revealing things to people and talking it out with them, we learn more about our own thought process and ourselves. Hand in hand with self-knowledge is self-validation. And this is basically when we talk something out with somebody and they validate us, they make us feel like we did the right thing or we're behaving the way we should. Another reward of self-disclosure is helping someone. Sometimes by us disclosing our personal past information, we're able to inspire or give others hope. While there are many benefits to self-disclosure, there are some risks, and that's why we don't disclose to just anyone. Our first fear in self-disclosure is outright rejection by others or, at a minimum, creating a negative impression of ourselves in the mind of another. We fear disapproval, and sometimes disclosures can either decrease the relationship satisfaction through like the disclosure of an affair or some betrayal, or it can cause us to lose influence in a relationship because of a negative impression about ourselves. Sometimes self-disclosures can either hurt others. Sometimes if we're too honest with our opinion, the opinion might be negative, and it's not always necessary or wise to share it because of the damage it can do to another person. When we disclose to others, we also run the risk of them violating our privacy and sharing that information with people that we would rather not have that information. If the information we share or disclose to someone is significant enough, it might also put a burden on them of keeping our private information. So beyond the risk and rewards, what are other factors that influence what we disclose to others? The first is the topic. We have certain norms in our society that say what's okay to talk about. We're more likely to talk about our hobbies or our job than our sex life or our financial situation. It's also probably no surprise to you that studies show that we're more likely to disclose favorable information about ourselves than unfavorable information. The second factor is your gender. Research finds great self-disclosure between women, a moderate amount between opposite sex dyads such as men and women, and the least amount of self-disclosure between men. Culture is also another factor that majorly affects the amount of disclosures and the information we're willing to disclose. Studies have shown that Americans disclose more than those in Great Britain, Germany, Japan, or Puerto Rico. And Americans disclose more information to other Americans than peoples of other cultures. Another factor impacting our level of disclosure is whether it's face-to-face, -face, text, or online. It's shown that we disclose quicker over text in an online manner, and oftentimes we'll disclose in more detail in an online setting. Another impact on the level you disclose is who your listener is. We disclose more to people we like, trust, and love. 
Studies also show that we're more likely to disclose to people close in age to us, and that it also works that as we disclose, we learn to like the person more. So the more disclosure, the more we like somebody. The final factor that influences our level of disclosure is our personality. We have people that are more extroverted that disclose more and more introverted that disclose less. Studies also show that those with high self-esteem tend to disclose more than those with low self-esteem. One popular model of disclosure called the Johari Window looks at the relationship of self-disclosure between a specific person and a specific listener. The Johari Window imagines all the information about you, information that you know, that others know, that might happen to you in the future that you don't know, all in one minute big window that is everything to know about you. This is the Johari window. If you look at the top of the Johari window, you will see that the left panel of information in the window contains information known to self, and that the right panel contains information unknown to the self. If you look to the side of the Johari window, you'll see that the information in the top plane includes information that's known to others about you, while the information in the bottom panes is unknown to others or not known by others. These known and unknown selves and the known to others and unknown to others intersect to create four separate areas or panels. The first area is the open self, and this basically means the information that we know about ourselves that we've shared with the other listener or person in the relationship. The second pane is the hidden area, and this is the information in a relationship that we know about ourselves, but we haven't shared with our listener or the other person in the relationship. The third pain in the relationship is information known by the listener or the other person in the relationship that we haven't figured out about ourselves. So maybe we're impatient or sometimes rude or discourteous and we don't realize it. The final pain in the relationship is information that neither of us know. So it's information you haven't discovered about yourself nor has your listener or other person in the relationship. The Johari window model, the open pain in any relationship starts out small, and as we disclose, that open pain grows and gets bigger and bigger, making all the other three panes of the window smaller. There are certain generalized patterns of the Johari window, and you see them represented here in this picture. The first is the ideal window. Notice that the open area is large and all the other windows are relatively small. That's your ideal relationship. The next type of window is the interviewer window. And this is an individual that's always asking questions about themselves and getting feedback about themselves in a relationship. But they disclose very little about them. Therefore, their blind window is small. But their hidden window is very large. The next type of Johari window is the bull in the china shop, and you'll notice that they have a huge blind area. That's because they're not very interested in receiving feedback, nor are they going to ask for it. You will notice that they have a small hidden window, and that's because they're always sharing their opinions. They want you to know what they think, and they want you to know about them. The final Johari window is called the turtle because they are in their shell. They really don't disclose any information about themselves and they really don't want you to tell them anything about themselves. They're kind of in their shell like a turtle. While not supported by the original researchers, there's a huge amount of evidence that says we have a generalized Johari window in the way that we interact with the world. So we can use a Johari window of how we disclose or don't disclose and learn how to communicate better overall. 
By discovering and thinking about your type of Johari window, you can think about what you need to do better in relationships. Do you need to take more risks with disclosure? Do you maybe need to disclose less? Do you maybe need to ask for more feedback or take feedback more constructively? Maybe you need to more take more chances or risk in your life. So the goal in a relationship is to reduce all the other pains. We reduce the hidden pain by disclosing and sharing ourselves with others. We reduce the blind area by asking and giving feedback with others. We reduce the blind area by shared discovery, our own and others' observations about ourselves. As you go through this week, I would like for you to think about your own level of disclosure. Too much, too little, or just enough? And if it's too much or too little, what do you need to do about it? This wraps up our video, and I hope you have a great day.